Zen 5 has had a bit of a rocky launch and the balance between price, performance and efficiency has been the main topic of discussion. What if price and efficiency was not a factor and performance was the only metric? We're taking a look at the flagship AMD Ryzen 9 9950X and seeing what makes it tick. This time though, we've got an ace up our sleeve. We're going to not only compare it to the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X, but maybe a CPU you didn't know existed. The Zen 4 based AM5 socket AMD EPIC 4564P. The most interesting part about all of this is the fact that almost no one has this EPIC chip and more than anything, I was curious to see what the difference in performance was between the Ryzen and EPIC parts. But let's start off by getting the biggest thing out of the way with the Ryzen 9 9950X, the price. The AMD Ryzen 9 9950X is going to be going for around $649 US dollars when it launches. As for specs, the 9950X is a 16 core 32 threaded CPU with a base clock of around about 4.3 gigahertz and it should boost to around 5.7 gigahertz. I ran a one hour Cinebench stress test to see what the deal with power consumption was and over that one hour period, I saw the 9950X pull 168 watts across all cores and 200 watts for the entire package. Which leads us into Cinebench 2024 testing. In Cinebench 2024 multi-core, we see the 9950X scoring 2,241 points. This puts it beyond the 7950X and the 4564P and well beyond the 14900K for comparison. In multi-core performance, that makes the 9950X about 4% faster than the 7950X and the 4564P. Remember what I was saying about Zen 5%? In single core performance, it's faster than anticipated, putting it right up there with chips like the Apple Silicon M3 Pro and right in line with the 14900K. In comparison to last generation 7950X and the Epic 4564P, it's about 14 to 15% faster on average. What I thought was interesting was a CPU based benchmark I have used many times over the years the Linux kernel compile test with the Pharonix test suite. In this test, we compile the Linux 6.8 kernel from source, and in source code compile using defconfig, we see the 9950X compile the Linux 6.8 kernel from source in around about 48 seconds. That is between 10 to 14% faster than both the 7950X and the Epic 4564P. The next thing was knowing what 3D performance was like without any restrictions using this big chonker over here, the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. And before you ask, we did all the tests with PBO both on and off, and we didn't see a gain or a loss with having it on or off, so we just left it on. We also tested everything with the same kit of G-Skilled Triton Z5 Neo 6000 Mega Transfer Memory because that's the sweet spot for both Zen 4 and Zen 5, and we did all of this on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. I decided to run all of these tests at their lower settings at 1080p and 1440p. Here's why. With GPUs like this huge 4090, we're quite CPU bound, and at 1080p and 1440p, that's how you should do it. And also, I was curious to see what the performance was like. Let's start off with Counter-Strike 2. There's a really good repeatable benchmark in the Steam Workshop that we use for all of this testing. At 1080p, the 9950X is the fastest for average frame rate. However, the 1% lows for all three CPUs are on par with each other. For average frame rates, the 9950X is between 9 to 10% faster on average, but also keep in mind that with titles like CS2, the 1% lows can be the difference between you winning and losing a match, and all the CPUs are within a margin of error. At 1440p, the gap was closed a little with the differences between the three CPUs being closer to around 8% in performance in favor of the 9950X and about 5% different in the 1% lows between the 7950X and the 9950X with the EPIC 4564P being 1% higher, which again is within a margin of error. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, this benchmark is quite old, but the great thing about this one is it's really good at exposing weaknesses with CPUs. The 9950X is the fastest CPU of the bunch. However, don't get too excited about it because it's only 4% faster than the 7950X on average and about 7% faster than a CPU designed for servers. Yeah. 
Jumping on over to 1440p, we're seeing the 9950X be around 6% faster than the 7950X and about 5% faster than the Epic 4564P. That Zen 5% is really living up to its name here. The only outlier is the 1% lows with the difference being about 7 to 8% generation on generation. On to Cyberpunk 2077, the 9950X is the fastest out of the bunch here, but again, not the night and day differences that AMD was claiming with the 9950X over the 7950X. At best, we're seeing about a 6% difference, not double digit differences as they were claiming. At 1440p, we see the same pattern again with the 9950X being faster, but again, by only about 4 to 5% on average. I think I got lucky with my sample here because, yeah, it's faster than it should be. <laughs> All right, on to Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p. The 9950X is again the fastest CPU out of the lot, however, only by 4%. The outlier here being the 1% average on the Epic 4564P. I retested this for validation and that was the result. It just was a little bit lower. At 1440p, we get close results across the board between all of these chips, with the standout being the 1% lows on the 7950X being about 6% faster than the 9950X. We saw something similar when we compared the 9700X and the 7700X. So yeah, this is just a pattern with this test and Zen 4 and Zen 5. Finally, onto a game I have personally sunk hundreds of hours into, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. COD is quite sensitive to CPU clock speeds, so at 1080p, the 9950X is about 2% faster on average, but in 1% lows, we're seeing an uplift of around about 20%. This is the first Zen 5 gaming metric to have a double digit uplift. Well, 20% at least. Don't get too excited because at 1440p, the 9950X is slower than both the 7950X and the 4564P by around 3%. Yeah. Overall, that's uh, some pretty underwhelming gaming performance results. Something that I thought was interesting that we haven't done before is a five game average. And I wanted to see what the difference was with all of the titles tested. The theme here is five, just remember that. And the 9950X on average in all of the titles that we tested in this video is 5% faster at best on average and 4% faster in 1% lows. Keep in mind that we test at the lowest quality settings and at medium and high settings as validated with hardware unboxed, the difference is way worse. Here's what Steve found with the 9950X in their 13 game average. And as you can see, the results are even more underwhelming. Make sure you go and check out the Hardware Unboxed 9950X review after this video. And special shout out to Steve for sharing some of your results with me because I was curious to see what other people were finding. This can be a very, very lonely job at times. But all of this begs the question, what has AMD actually been doing with Zen 5 to make it better? What's the point of it? Is four better than five? Is the earth flat? Do pigs fly? Because according to AMD, the earth is flat and pigs do fly. Because while the performance for CAN benchmarks like Cinebench and code compilation do net double digit gains over last generation, AMD markets these CPUs as the fastest gaming CPUs on the market. While there is, uh, let, let's say there's some truth to this statement, the degree of truth comes into question. 5% in gaming performance is like emptying the tissues out of your car and saying that you doubled the car's power to weight ratio by taking rubbish out of your car. You're just not gonna notice it. The debate about PBO and efficiency is also null and void because these chips are not designed to be efficient. If anything, these chips are designed to be super inefficient. Put this into perspective. While testing with PBO enabled on both the Epic and the 7950X, these pulled 210 watts at the socket and the 9950X pulled just 200 watts at the socket. The 9950X pulls exactly 5% less power. The 9950X in best case scenarios and conditions is about 5% better if you're extremely lucky. Realistically, there's no reason to buy the 9950X. Well, at least there isn't a reason now. 
even if you're building a completely new system and you don't have a CPU, a 7950X will do you just fine. You're getting about the same performance, give or take two to 5%, and the price will be dramatically lower because the 7950X can be had for as little as around about 530 US dollars, depending on where you look. The Epic 4564P is more expensive, but honestly, <laughs> You're not buying an Epic for your gaming PC. I just thought including a CPU like this would be a pretty cool comparison because I can guarantee no one else has one of these, right? Now, the biggest part about all of this is I think AMD has missed an opportunity to call Zen 5, Zen 5% because that's what we're seeing almost across the board in every single test, 5%. 5%. I'll say it one more time for the people up the back. 5%. The gap between the 5950X and 7950X was huge, up to 30% gen on gen uplift. That was in the space of two years. There's now been two years between the 7950X and the 9950X with 5% gains. I think AMD is having their Skylake moment. It feels to me like it's 14 nanometers all over again.